In this video tutorial, we're going to go over how to utilize Niagara caching for caching out Niagara fluids for cinematics or VFX. This way you'll be able to scrub the time bar and get predictable simulations on your effects because they're pre-simulated and pre-cached out and you can just play them back. This way you can make sure that you cache things out in a way that look good and that always play back exactly the same. And this is useful for anything with VFX, short films, cinematics, that's where you kind of want to use this. And it'll also allow us to change the cache offset so we can adjust when those effects start and when they end. So it'll give you a lot more control for setting things up timing wise and making sure that you have the same result every time you play it back. So we'll take a look at how you can set this up in Unreal 5.2. So to begin, really simple scene here. I'm just going to go to edit plugins and make sure that I have my Niagara sim cache plugin enabled and loaded. If you have that enabled, you'll be able to cache out your effects. So then we'll just go in here, drop our effects into our scene. So I just have this fire from one of our last little tutorials that I had. And I have this building set with a collider tag, so it will collide with the building as best as it can. And now we have this fire coming out the window. And now this fire is real time simulated, so I can't offset the timing. I don't have predictable playback doesn't really work well if I would have it in a cutscene or some short film or something that I'd be making. So we have to cache this out if we want predictable results and to keep it a little bit quicker as well. So to do that, I'm going to go and add a sequence. So I'm going to go up here and add a level sequence. I'm just going to call it test sequence. And now I have a new sequence. I'm going to drag and drop this fire into my sequencer. I will click on the track button and go and add Niagara component zero under my FXS fire. And that will give us access to all the options and adjustments under our Niagara component. And I'll click on that track and add a lifespan. So I'll go up here and go to that Niagara system lifecycle track and add one of those. This is how long its life cycle is. And right now it goes beyond our frame range. I could just cut that back. and frame range is how much it's going to sim out as well. So right now it's sim out 150 frames by default. I'm just going to move this to 60 and I'll adjust my life cycle track to that amount as well. So once I have that, I just have to create a cache. So I'll go on this Niagara component zero, right click or not right click, but track and then go to Niagara cache. Now we have our sim cache. And we have a warning which tells us we need to either start our life cycle a frame before it starts caching or change this system life cycle to age update mode, desired age instead of tick delta time. Tick delta time will use the games tick or cycle and that's not always the same every frame. So setting it to desired age will give us more predictable results. It might not make much of a difference, but you'll have to set it to that if you don't want to change your life cycle to start a frame before and if you want to make sure that your your output is more kind of correct with updating based on the frame numbers rather than the game's tick cycle. So I'm going to change this age update mode to desired age for our system life cycle. And now I can set my frame, maybe frame zero, and I'll click record and it will cash out our effects. So there it goes. Sometimes it'll start a frame later like it just did. I can stop this and just go back here, record it again and then it starts at the correct frame. Sometimes it just does that. And there we go. It caches out all the frames, all 60 frames that I have here in my time span. And now when I drag or scrub the time bar, we see that fire only updating when I change the frames and it's all perfectly cached out and predictable. So now it works great for if you have it in a cutscene or some sort of short film because I can offset this cache. I can have the fire start later and there we go or have it start earlier. So it's adjustable now. That cache is now pre-calculated and saved out. Now, one other thing that's really useful is even though we have our cache now pre-calculated and saved out, what happens if you don't have a large enough cache to cover the full range and you want to stretch it or shrink it? So if I go here and I cache out just a, a couple frames, maybe only like 
15 frames or so or around there, it's a very small cache that ends and then stops. You can change the behavior of that. I can right click on this cache, go to edit section, and I can set the playback rate, so play rate here, but I can also change what happens if I stretch it. So right now it's set to time dilate. So if I were to stretch this to fit my full range, it'll play the effects slower to stretch to that full range. Now you can also right click on our effects, our effects cache here and go to edit section. And instead of time dilate, we can change it to repeat. And now we see these little vertical lines where it repeats that sim over and over again. So it plays, that's where it ends, and then it starts again and again and again. So you can have your effects cache repeat over and over again. If it's something like a torch burning, maybe you can get away with repeating it instead of having to cache out or sim out 2000 frames or some really large amount or something. So this can be very useful as well. The very final thing we can also do is right now our effects cache kind of lives in our sequencer. We can right click on this cache, save it to an asset, and then you can give it a name. Uh, so I can then save it out maybe to FXS fire sim cache 001 save and then what happens is it opens up this window which you can just close and now if I right click on this FXS fire sim cache and go to edit I'll see that it's using this that sim cache here that asset and it lives under the game folder and it's a cached out sim cache. So that way I could technically have different versions of this effects, save them out separately and kind of toggle between them or compare them or whatnot. So you can cache out your sims and then always add them back. Now one thing is if you move your sim. So if you have something like this and then you move this over here instead, that's going to have to be recached out. You can't really, you know, the collisions and stuff won't transfer over anyways uh, because you've changed the whole sim. Like you've changed where it's going to be simulating with. So in that case, you have to go back here, record and recache it out in that new position. So now you're able to cache out your Niagara fluids, your Niagara effects, and hopefully make those cinematic VFX and short film workflows a little bit easier and more predictable. So it's also a little bit quicker as well. You don't have to deal with all these caches running constantly in the viewport. If you found this useful or you learned something new, make sure to like, subscribe, press the bell button to be notified of future videos, and check out the Patreon down below in the description. If you are part of the Patreon, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video, which goes over all the steps that we've kind of gone over in this video, uh, but in a PDF form for just referencing back to and going over those steps. And sometimes there's a bit more information in here as well, which might be useful. So if you're part of the Patreon, you can definitely check that out and let me know in the comments below what kind of content, what kind of videos you'd also like to see next.